Hello, everyone, and welcome Hello. to 100! 100! 100! So, uh, today is our 100th stream, not considering like the extra ones that we did, like the book club, the design ones, and uh, slices that were the pre recorded ones. But this is the 100th official episode, and what better way to celebrate it than having 50% more Italians on the stream? <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, welcome, Daniele. This is your you. first time on the stream, and I think first time public appearance, yeah, probably as well. Mostly, uh, yeah, I would say so. So welcome and thank you for being with us. Uh, we had already uh, a stream uh, a couple of months back with Mark on gaming, but it was about Unreal. And today we're focusing on something more, let's say, attainable <laughs> for someone that does uh, Android stuff. So um, first of all, I would say before I let Ivan do the Ivan thing, why don't you tell us what you do <laughs> and why okay, do you yeah, know these sure. things about gaming? Hi, yeah, so I'm an Android developer. I work as a freelancer with Duolingo. Uh, but yeah, in my free time, I like to, to explore more about programming. And, you know, a lot of us also, like, we also watch a lot of videos together with you, Sebastian, on game development, and so, so on and so forth. Uh, so I started looking for a solution um, to the problem that I don't want to learn everything, everything basically from new, from scratch, and like getting a completely different system, like it could be uh, Godot, Unity, Unreal, and so on so forth. And so I went to this lovely project, which is a JVM project, uh, which is called LibGDX. And basically, it's, it's a very similar approach to what you have in Android. And so I found it very familiar and very easy to use compared to, to having to learn everything else. It's a bit different from um, from gain engines because it's you don't have like um, um, a dedicated editor, so you just use IntelliJ. Even so, the personally, best I find that yeah, I, I mean that's that's great. You don't need to 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 learn how to to code in like um, a beautiful text editor like Notepad or stuff like that. Yeah, why not? You know. Go back to the good old days when we used to only have the notepad. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, ch chances are that the latest version of Notepad has like machine learning AI and everything's built inside and probably smarter than, than it was. Yeah, it would be smarter of all of us. <laughs> just right. And it's I mean, it could be a video player where you see the text just appear and just mm -hmm. wait. Like a text adventure kind of thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, going back to the main topic. Yes, yeah. So, what is GDX? Um, if you want, you can share. You can share my screen. So. Yes, can... but before that, let's let even do the even thing. Okay. Yes, very quickly because I'm very curious about two D uh, gaming development uh, because three D is hard. So let's take a dimension. Um, so I want to thank you for this incredible achievement, 100 episode with you um, every week that support us. Um, I, I want to remind you that you can support us in um, many ways. Uh, if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you can connect your Amazon Prime account with your Amazon gaming account, and then you get a free subscription on Twitch every month. Uh, you can buy our merchandising. Uh, you can buy, for instance, the, the metal pin that I have here. Uh, you can buy the, the keychain. You can buy the t-shirts. You can buy the, um, the, the stickers. Everything that, uh, um, that, that you would like to have as a physical item uh, from Code with Italians in your life. Or you can become a subscriber. Uh, we have a coffee page where you can uh, basically um, subscribe to one of our tiers. Uh, there are a few of them. Pick the one that you can uh, enjoy more. Uh, just a reminder that if you pick the Bruschetta one, you will be able to access our Discord server. And the Discord server is where we also post the link for the private video chat that we have every episode, more or less. 
after the episode um, with the guest. So it's going to be like a, a very intimate uh, chat usually. Me and Sebastian are there, the guests are there, Mark Ellison is usually there, Aurelio was there, every now and then he's there. We, we have a few people that join us and it's it's a bit more uh, intimate and you, you get to meet basically us and the guest. Um, so thank you for the support. Uh, we are going to be um, giving away uh, a few things. Sebastian, can I spoiler this? Yes, uh, fine, uh, fine. So, uh, Fine, fine. So today we are giving away a copy of uh, Jetpack Compose Internals by Jorge Castillo. And we are going to give away the Code with Italian Starter Pack. Um, and it's going to basically be everything that we have, the metal pin, the keychain, and a bunch of stickers. And it's going to be for free. And yeah, we are going to run the, the giveaway in the chat as usual. So wait for the, the word that you have to type in to get uh, to join the, the giveaway. Thank you. Let's build something. Uh, OK. So, Daniele, I'm going to show your screen. Are you ready? Sure. Yeah. Why not? I can see myself in your screen. <laughs> oh, my god. Wait, that's the wrong screen, so is yes, it? Yes, you're sharing the wrong screen. <laughs> yes. Stop sharing my screen and I will change yep. the screen. Go for it. Yes. Uh, it wouldn't Sh be our oh. stream if something didn't go wrong. Hey, uh, do you see the right screen now? Yeah, this is more legit. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we were saying so about we? libgdx. Oh yes, so um, so this is the website, and just just to give you an idea, basically libgdx can can run on many many platforms. So the the base is a JVM engine, but it also runs on web through uh, GWT, um, and also runs on Android, runs on on iOS through I think RoboVM. Even to personally, I never use the iOS bit because I don't have a Mac, so I have no idea how it works. Uh, there are a bit of um, constraints, you, you would say. So, for example, you can use Kotlin, uh, but it's not as easy to to run on web with Kotlin because obviously GWT doesn't support Kotlin. Um, you you can run on iOS, but obviously you are limited to the tools that they are using to um, so usually those tools have a limitation, for example, on the JVM version, like you, we would have in Android back in the day. So you would have, I don't know, JDK7 JDK or stuff like that. Uh, but there is also a lot of stuff that, oops, not features, showcase that has been done with GDX. I think Slate Aspire is quite famous as a game, for example. Uh, if you look at the pages, full of, I think, beautiful games that have been done with it. Um, and there is even more. If you go in the Discord, there is like a lot of people that every day share um, their, their screenshots, their video on the game. And it's one of the things that I love of GDX is their community. So it's it's a different thing that I, I, I had from, from other communities in gaming where uh, they, feel, they felt a bit dispersive. Uh, while LibGDX, being a bit of more of a niche community than than other ones, um, basically, for example, if you have a question, you you are quite sure that someone is going to answer in like a decent amount of time. Uh, you shot, you see always the same people. Uh, so if you like to be in a community, it's kind of it's very fun, and um, it's also where I found my uh, first online gaming friend, like video game development friend, which is Sandra. Uh, where and basically we, we did a lot of games during something which is called jumps, which is uh, let's say a very short period where you start and end a game similar to to a hackathon. Um, and for I, just for the the people that are there are in the chat, we have real when Daniele does this kind of jams, uh, we have real time uh, updates develop on developments on our Telegram. Uh, yes. Telegram. Group. Yes. And it's it's actually the best because we we get to see the 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 working stuff the bro breaks the broken stuff <laughs> the fixing yeah. and the, the evolution of the of the, the whole game so that's that's great so we can say that we have seen all of these games already 
if we, yes like if you have them, been in yeah. the telegram well not all of them but if you've been in our telegram you have seen at least a few of them <laughs> yeah i think you, you saw this one which is the last one uh, yes. which i'm actually very proud i think it shows me that you can do a very fun game in in a very short, short amount of time then some of them like this one is by sandra herself uh, while this one is another game that we did together um, so what is a gem? Basically, a gem is like a very short period where you, you make a game from scratch. You show your stuff from zero, so you don't have assets, you don't have code, uh, apart from like a starting project or stuff like that. And I think the gems are great because they give you um, a limited amount of time that you can uh, decide to, to dedicate to, to the game and then it's done. So you just leave it, all, like, leave it as it is. And it's been basically the only way that I managed to do uh, complete games from start to, to, to end. And Classic side project problem where you never finish them. <laughs> yeah. And... yeah. Mm -hmm. This kind of fixes it because, <laughs> because, because it's time boxed, basically. Yeah. And I think you don't even need to, like, for example, if you DX jumps are usually one week long, but it doesn't mean that you have to spend like every single day of your week working on the game. Maybe you want to, like some people work only during the weekend because they just have the time. Um, and it's, it's a very good tool to, to learn how to finish the game because you have to obviously like, how we work in, in like in our daily job that we have constraints and we have to decide where, whether or not like something is doable and, and is gonna give us what we want in, in a game jam having like seven days you you have a fixed amount of day of time and you want to get something achievable which is great if you want to learn to do something because if you have like an imme immense plan i have like immense plans for games that i never make uh while small games i usually do something um and there is also some some useful tools like the starter project here. Uh, do you want me to get you the link, Seb? Uh, yeah, if you can post them in the chat, that'd be great. Yes, I may. There you go. Thank you very much. So this one is, is, is basically a, a tool to create <clears throat> an empty project, and it gives you a ton of options. So, for example, you want to to develop for desktop, for Android, iOS, HTML. It does. It does also have Kotlin setup. So, if you want to develop your game in Kotlin, you can uh, develop it in Kotlin. Uh, and it has an experimental web Kotlin platform that I would want to to try at some point because I'm really excited to to be able to uh, to do game gens in Kotlin. I usually work in Java. That might be a bit weird. Uh, coming from Android, um, and it, but it's mostly because when you do a game jam, you want your game to be played. Um, and usually uh, it's easier for, for folks to, to play your game if it's on the web, because it's not like a weird jar that you have to install from anywhere or a weird executable. So uh, you get more plays if you, if you publish your game in, in web. And that's, that's... what I remember you mentioned is that the Java <laughs> Sorry, the JDK version limit is mostly due to the ability of GWT to run, to understand the Java code and run it on the web, right? Yes, yeah. so, um, so and so in the sense it's that and also iOS that is, lim is a limiting factor. Mm -hmm. I think iOS more than GWT. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it basically I think it stops you from going further than JDK 8. Uh, even though uh, the author of this tool, I think, is also working on having like the latest version of GWT, which I think supports up to JDK 11. Hmm. So, yeah. I am and, honestly surprised that GWT still exists. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's developed anymore, but yeah, it does exist. Anyway, let's go to maybe actually see how a game looks from the inside. Uh, so here, uh, I'm just going to first show it and see how it, it looks from like as a game perspective. And then we're going to see what, what it is. It's, it's a simple Bessie a snake clone, uh, which I made in, I don't know, three hours. Yes, so. Not bad. So 
So yeah, have I, you? So what was your first step? The 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 starter pack, the the project that you that you showed or, us, or you just started from scratch, like like a hero? So in my case, I actually have my own GitHub starter. So I just have my oh, own nice. project, that, like it's a starter template, and you just can duplicate and then um, reuse. And it's just because like I'm a bit Do done all about uh, um, Gradle. And I want to have the Gradle file cleaned up as I want, so you know, I just need my own. Is it is it open source? Yeah. For um, for other anal people, I guess. <laughs> like someone we know. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what. You... <laughs> Am I so... referring to us? Maybe. <laughs> is this one? Or the room, um, or, or which the, I mean, huh? the and. Yeah, okay, go. so and I, I have to stick to Java, right? So there's no nowhere. Uh, you can no, you can work with Kotlin actually, uh, as long as you okay. don't want to do web, or if you want to do web, like you need to know that is it's still experimental. So you know, you get what you get. Okay, fair enough. But so for example, if you want to do a game for desktop, you don't you don't have that issue, and you can use Kotlin whatever you want because it's just JVM. Uh, okay, so how do you make things appear on the screen? So this is uh, what I was working on, and we're going to go from the very start without all this stuff. So basically, I, what you have um, in a LGBDF project is you have multiple modules, multiple Gradle modules, because it works with Gradle, so uh, there are a bit of dependencies. But you can see here there is core, desktop, and HTML. Um, Presentation mode, maybe? No, you don't see everything else. Never mind. So, and basically, this one is the way that you, so basically, the way that it works is that you, you basically write your gaming core, and then you have desktop to, to create the jar and HTML to create the, the HTML page. Mm -hmm. um, so, 99% of the things that you're going to look at are going to be in core. Um, and it all starts with a class called game, which is by libgdx which is very similar to what you would have in an activity. So let's say you have pose, resume, you have render, which is, we're going to see what it is, and then you have resize, because obviously the, the window can resize in, in, a, in a GDX game. But basically, you have a similar life cycle that you would have in Android. Um, and this is, and you, you kind of hook into it. So a game then can have multiple screens, so you can just render in it. Uh, here there is like a lot of stuff because I, I, I use Dagger since it's a Java project. So um, there is a lot of weird stuff because it's basically the class where, where you create the Dagger component. Uh, but basically what it does, it just go to the to the next level, which is just a level screen. So this is where actually all the game is. The, the, like this class is the whole game. And basically every single um, screen has similar methods to, to, to what you have in a, in a game. So you have resizing to resize the game, you have show when the screen appears, you have hide when the screen uh, disappears, and so on and so forth. Um, and you, you can think of a game like, you know, a flip book animation where you have like every single page is a different frame. So what you do in like when, when you render a game, you do the similar thing. So every frame you re-render the whole screen, and obviously, the like changing frame by frame gives you the, the illusion of animation and movement. And and so what what basically you do is in the render method, this one is called every frame, and there is there is a number which is how much time has passed till the la till the last frame. So and this method is the main gain loop, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So maybe maybe we should explain what a game loop is. <laughs> yeah. So basically, you can imagine a game running every like imagine it runs one one per frame, so it's like sixty times a second. During that bit, you would want to to do everything that happens in the game. So uh, you might want I don't know my my snake for example is moving every every dot seconds. Then you have and then in in, this, in my game it's just the snake moving. <laughs> 
but yeah, basically you would advance. So for example, if you have physics, you would advance by how much time has passed. So it's essentially this method is called in a while through every yeah. for every frame. Obviously, if you're taking too long to render the frame, then you're going to be dropping frames, but it will at least tell you, oh, this is the delta of time that has passed. And the reason for that is for stuff like physics and uh, game simulation, right? So if you yeah, skip a yeah. frame, it doesn't forget that yeah. that's, that's happened. Physics is slightly more complicated. Thankfully, like snakes doesn't need physics uh, in the sense physics needs to to run at a constant rate. So yeah. for example, if your frame takes first uh, 15 milliseconds and then it takes 17 milliseconds, you, you still want your physics to go as like, like 16 milliseconds per, uh, per, per time or whatever it is. So it's it's slightly more complicated, but there are solutions for that. Because um, otherwise what happens is what used to happen with old games that were running, that we're assuming that the frame rate was always the same. And then yeah. if you end up on a fast CPU, then the frame rate is like a thousand frames a second and is unplayable. Yeah. Thankfully on that, um, one great thing of LGDX is also the documentation. So you, you have those concepts explained in, in the guide. So in, in the documentation on the website, you can see and other things that matter for games. So for example, memory concerns, because you cannot just create new objects every time um, being in a loop and so on and so forth. Um, but in general, the, the way that basic and the render loop looks at like is first you clear your screen, which means you, you delete the whatever was wrong before. And this is actually important in the sense you, if you don't do that, you would like your game would look like um, do you know where when you win at a solitaire in, in Windows and there is this kind of weird effect that leaves? That is exactly what, like, if I remove this one and I just play, this is going to look very weird. Yeah, you can see that basically, like, it's. Uh, yeah. We cannot see it, but. Yeah, excuse oh, me. I think right. you are it's sharing the only screen. the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at it and looking at the right screen. Yeah. Very kind of you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a style, I guess, but yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Looks I, like I have no idea what's going like on. The life, the, the, how is the life game? How is it? Um, okay, so can you run the the game uh, as it's supposed to be? Because I think we, we lost the first round because it was on the other screen. Oh, was it? Okay, yeah, yes. I think. Yeah, Not that I don't know how snake. Okay, so can okay, so that's actually snake. Yeah, the, the snake eating. Okay. Yeah, without oh, the borders was... because I couldn't be bothered like. Hitting so it, the it goes through. It goes through the border. So you can never die. Basically, you can just you can die yourself. It, it, like can and die. If you hit yourself. There you go. Okay. Okay. Even I'm the one that generally uh, breaks the games. The well breaks everything. And then yeah, it continues. Yeah, yeah, but this is this is cool. Okay, so uh, yeah, so that's why you you clear the screen basically, and then you you do all other stuff. Another thing that I want to show is that you need to be a, you don't need to be an artist to to make like decent game. In this game, the only asset is this, which is a one by one pixel white. Um, and this is basically like uh, it's in my starter project, for example, in many starter projects, because the white pixel can be used and recolored. Um, and similar, for example, is for fonts. You usually fonts are pre-rendered as images, and they're usually white, so you can recolor them by just setting the color. That's an interesting um, order of the letters. Yeah. So this is called the bitmap font and it has like mm -hmm. this this file ah, right. then, yeah i have so then that's essentially the atlas of the font and then you just take up the bits that you need of yes. the letter and copy it on the screen yes and in general in, in game development at least in libgdx you want to be using atlases and sprite sheets so you don't want to to use single single images um you actually you can see here there is like pack json and then there is this thing not uh, folder here. This is because, well, this is in, in this case is the same image, 
But what happens is that I'm packing all the images together in a bigger image, so then you don't need to actually load different images at runtime. You can just draw from the same image. And, and this is actually it's, it's explained better in, in the in the documentation map. This is this is this is a huge boost to performances compared to not using it to the point that you cannot really just draw the single image in practice in most games. In this game, I, I'm doing it because there is just the pixel, but yeah. Um, so then here, what I'm doing is like without looking at basically, I'm, I'm checking if the snake is going to eat the fruit. Then I'm checking if the snake hits itself. And then just like, you know, if, if there is game over, don't don't let the player play. So this is just like move the snake only if it's not game over. Mm -hmm. And this stuff here is basically used to to show the um, um, things on the screen. We're going to see what a stage is, uh, but basically a stage is part of libgdx. And the API, you can think of it like you have a stage and you have actors playing in the stage. Um, so every everything that moves on the screen, in this, in this case, the, the white pixels are just basically like actors moving in the stage and acting. Mm -hmm. Um, and why there is all act and draw is because draw is just to to draw whatever you want to draw. Act could be you are advancing an animation, so any, anything that you would have like in a view logic in uh, in Android would be something that you have in act, while the drawing logic would be in draw. So act is update the, the game state and draw is display the game state, right? Sort of, yeah. Okay. This is just a view library. You can also use it to, like, you know, you. Yeah, I don't do that, but you can. You can also have your actor have act with the game logic inside, and it, there is a good point. Like, there is a point in making it because then you have everything like connected together. It can be very convenient. Got it. Yeah, I did something similar. You can see here snake. I, I call just snake act mm -hmm. because I copy basically the same the same API. Um, and why why is there a stage is also to to be able to um, resize because obviously like as I was saying that's that's a one pixel big but you, you can see that it's definitely bigger than one pixel here right yeah yeah so the way that it works is that usually you don't directly draw on the screen but you draw it through a viewport and the viewport mm -hmm. is a way to scale your screen so it can be um, Usually you have like the fifth viewport, which is like, I don't know, I want my screen to always be 16 by 9. And then, you know, at the black bars, wherever, whenever the... Um, Got it. Yeah. So is that... And so but, you, mm -hmm. you know, you have your like internal resolution and you always refer to that. And then the, the scaling yeah, exactly. or letterboxing is done separately from that. Yeah. and. Uh, that that has a lot of advantages. For so for example, your game resolution does not need to be equal to your world resolution. So for example, something that for you is one, you can define it as some one meter, and it does not mean like it, it, it's not important anymore as how big it appears on the screen. That depends on like how big the viewport is. Uh, so for example, in my case, my world is just sixteen by ten. So that's that's the square where the where the snake lives, and and that's also the viewport. So you have mm -hmm. one pixel, which is one sixteenth of the the large like of the width and one tenth of the height. Um, and that's very convenient because then then you you can just think of it like the snake just moves like from zero to one, from one to two, and so on and so forth. It's it's very simple to to keep track of. And then I have another stage, which is for my UI, because I want more resolution for the UI. Obviously, if I have like 16 by 10 as a resolution in the UI, you cannot really write, right? Because there is not enough pixels to. Um, so since since everything is based on a viewport, just you have just another viewport, and you say, okay, this one is going to be 32 times more dense than the other one, which kind of felt like I just tried whichever number worked for me. And you can see it here. So basically, what, what I'm doing here is I'm first applying the first viewport, which is the 16 by 10. So I'm drawing into this 16 by 10 kind of space. 
and then I'm applying the other one. So the, the second stage will draw in this bigger space, even though screen wise they're at the same dimension. And those are also useful, like uh, if you imagine minimaps in video games, you know, where, where you have like the small display which is on top of something else. That's a viewport. So you have a viewport here, and then you have the, the whole viewport, which would be the, the whole screen. Either way, yes. Um, so if you look here, there is also like how to play sounds. And usually what you do is you load the sound. There are better ways than this, but this one I think it was very, very clear. So like you just load a file. And then you create a sound. Mm -hmm. And you have music. So music is like when you have the background music. It's like long-lived audio. A sound is like a sound effect that you, you might want to play like a lot of times. So they're optimized for different use cases. Um, and yeah, you do the music in the same way. So you just do new music with whatever it is, and you just do play. So you can say here, for example, here is just music play when, when the screen shows and music stop when when the screen side. And for the sounds, it's you usually don't have a stop because it's very short. So it just, you know, it sound or play. Um, and for the snake itself, like we can see how the snake works. I think it's gonna make a bit more sense if we look at yeah, yeah, let's do it. So this is just a normal Java class. So you can see like all the, this is just a contractor. But the idea of a snake is that you can get every single bit is just a square. And you have like a list of squares and you just move the first one and the other one follow through. So it's not a weird shape. You just have many, many squares that follow each other. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what I have here is basically I have the positions. This is just my data layer, sort of. So these are all the pixels in the world where the body of the snake are. Yeah. Is. And I have the images, which is just what will show. So this one, they're, they're just going to be uh, be called draw, and they have the right position, and they will right. just show up. Okay. Yeah. And every image is, is just the one white pixel uh, thing. It's nothing, nothing more. Um, then I ju I'm just saving the snake image, which would be the, the white pixel. The step is how fast the snake goes. So it's like, oh, I want to uh, to make it faster. I just shorten the step, and that's how like how often the, the snake moves. Do you know that like you know the snake has like the yeah. difficulty levels? Yeah, like like speed basically. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm keeping those because I want to. Uh, to wrap around the world, right? So I want to go from the from the left to the right, and from the top to bottom, and so on and so forth. So if we go in this one, I think is the, the most important. So you first want to to see if the user is is pressing like some buttons, so you that the snake moves uh, reacting to your input. And so the way that I'm doing it, I'm just checking whichever button is pressed. So when you go up, yeah, like, you know, press up, go up, press down, go down, and so on and so forth. Uh, and this other thing here is because I noticed that otherwise, like if, you, if you're going up, you don't want to be able to go down. You want to go only right and left, and so on and so forth. So this is basically just, if you're going in the opposite direction, you cannot really switch. And so this one just basically returns a direction, which are those here. Uh, then I am accumulating the, the time that is passing, because as I was telling you, uh, you want the snake to move not every frame. You want the snake to move every now and then. So for example, you want the, the, the snake to move every half a second, for example. That's, that's your step. Uh, while this one might be like, I don't know, 16 milliseconds and so forth. So I am basically just adding up the time. And when the time mm -hmm. is enough, I'm just rolling it back. So this one, I, and then you actually, you, you move the, mm -hmm. the snake yeah. when you reach the threshold and then you reset the, the counter. Exactly. The accumulator. 
Yeah, okay. I basically reduce it here, and when you you get to to less than than this step, you you, you go back. Move forwards is just gonna set a position as far as our, yeah, it's it's doing stuff, but the idea is that you're moving in one direction. Uh, yeah, let's let's look at yeah, and then as I was saying, yeah, you, you have the accumulator, and this one is a weird thing that I had to do, uh, which yeah, I, I had to do because I, I didn't know how to code it otherwise, and it's horrible. But the idea is that you basically just keep looping and move the snake. Um, this grow position is because um, you want the snake to uh, to die if the head is is hitting its own body, right? Yeah. But you also want the snake to grow. So the the one million question is where do you put the new body piece? It, like because if you put it on the head. It's going to be on the head, and then the snake lost the game, like you lost the game. Because there's mm -hmm. two body parts in the same spot. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because you just create it on the head, but then you don't know where to create it. So uh, this one is just a way to to wait till the snake moves before placing the last piece. Uh, but yeah, looking at how the snake actually grows. So this one is where you actually add this, the the bit on the on the snake body. So a vector two is basically x y. It's a coordinate x y coordinate. So you, those those are the two important bits. Uh, and yeah, vector three. If you have like the three D space, because LibGL does support three D, it's just I am not good for that. So uh, I cannot use that. I love that um, the, the package name is com dot bad math. Uh, bad math. Oh yes, that's um, I I don't remember why it's com dot uh, I think logic, it's the original yeah, yeah the original creator. Really. It's <laughs> it's I think uh, I opened libgdx the first time when I was in Italy, so it's like more than ten years ago, and mm. it was already existing and not at the early stage, so I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, then you create an image basically. So the, this image turns is out this so, thing was in, on the Apollo. <laughs> and Jim, right? like he was already there, running on the Arduino kind of thing that they had. It was like six words of memory. Yeah. But it was doing 30 frames per second. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did, I, I did see the um, like LibGDX game running on um, on an Arduino. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's Java, so as long as you have an ARM compatible Java, it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you but know that you I have working. Like, do um, you have enough RAM on an Arduino to even spin up just the JVM? Yeah, I mean, you have a couple of gigabytes, right? On an well, Arduino? Not the Arduino? No, sorry, not Arduino. Um, I was Raspberry thinking Pi. of Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Ah, no, no. yeah, ah, that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. that, yes, yeah. We're talking about different yeah. orders of magnitude. No, Arduino, here. no, no, no way. <laughs> not even, not even thinking about the. But yeah, so this is how you create an image. So you, you can see here, it's just like an image is just a class where you, you pass, this is basically uh, the texture. The drawable. Yeah, it's basically the, you know, the, the image that you created before when you were here. You just loaded it, right? Yeah, it's, it's this bit here, where are you? Um, oh yeah, oops. This bit here. So Atlas find region is because as I was telling you, basically I'm not using directly the image because you shouldn't. You should use basically something which is called a sprite sheet, which is imagine all the images compressed together. So it's like one texture that is being uploaded to the GPU. Yeah, I can actually show you probably in my previous jam. It's going to be a bit bit more clear what how it looks. Is it the vampire one? Yeah, this is the vampire one. Uh, and if you look at the, the images, this bit here is what you get. So you, you uh, can see that there are like uh, many images. Wow, everything is in the same place. Wow, OK. Yeah. And this it one reminds because... me of mm -hmm. like CSS, right? You know, it was at some point CSS was doing something like this, that, that you had all the icons. And then you were to, to pick the icon, you were basically just offsetting on this gigantic image, I remember something like this. I don't, I don't remember why or if it was. I legit, think you're but... thinking about the tables where you have the borders. You had to have four 
uh, different images. So the four borders have the round borders when CSS did not uh, support the the round borders. I I don't I don't remember, but this image gave me some some weird memory where you know everything was on the same just image, and then you just were offsetting the 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 piece of screen that it was actually transparent right that everything yeah it was it, it was a it was a weird solution for somebody but this gives me the uh, gives me that kind of vibe and so you can just I, get can i say one an thing an image with everything yeah hmm? so this one i usually generate it so we are in gradle um and it's there is basically already a tool for that and you you just create a task for it if i can find it yeah there you go task pack textures so you basically give it like okay. An input directory, which is, is all the images that you have, mm -hmm. uh, which in my case is like this, oops, all this folder here, and you output it somewhere. And basically, it's going to get all the images and pack them all together in this. Okay. It's not something the I do normally. The other file is the, the one with the coordinates. Yes, so this one will okay. have how big the, the image is, um, other things that are important for like scaling and I mean there is a documentation it's probably clear but like you know uh, you, you might have um, let's see if I can show you probably it's, it's more visible on this somewhere so I don't know if it's clear but here you can see that those things seem to go outside of the drawing so like here there should be a line between those two there like there is this bit here that looks like wrong can you see it barely yeah yeah i'm trying to get to the zoom does not work very very well but basically the idea is that um when you when you have um an atlas or, or a sprite sheet you want to have at the borders of each tile some pixel which are equal to to the same color that you have in the tile so you have kind of like some padding for each element and that is because otherwise there is there is something which like it, it kind of looks weird um, otherwise because you, you basically have the GPU that tries to get the image but like you know uh, there might be a bit of rounding error and you just hit a different pixel. Right. So it's like yeah. oh I'll, I'm gonna put one extra row or, yeah. or column of pixels for pixels that are on the border. So it doesn't yeah. get the pixels from the next image over, which might be entirely different. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, you might have like weird lines at the border, so which are like you're just seeing the. Um, the this the is only a problem if it's scaling the images, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be. Yeah, because it's basically like a rounding issue with mm. flow numbers. Um, it's yeah, it's like when you in Photoshop or whatever blur an image and you are getting close to the border and that the uh, image blurred on the borders is weird because there's yeah. no information outside of there. Yeah, exactly. Can I, so better you follow huh? can I say one thing? There's another thing that you, you use every day that uses atlases and because it's code with Italians, uh, it's text. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to put in a very old post by Roman Guy from like nine years ago. Wow. Almost to the day um, that explains how text rendering works on Android. And it's surprisingly similar where everything gets rendered into a big bitmap. And then the GPU is told, oh, get this bit from here, that bit from there, put them together. And now it says hi. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think that actually... Um... Once I asked in the in the Android Slack about that, and I think he, he did respond with something similar uh, about the text. Also, in this case, yes. So answering uh, Raul, Raul, sorry Aurelio. for the. Oh, it's already okay. Yes. Yeah, you can yes. you can do object pooling. I didn't in this game in particular because it was very simple, but you do have um, a lot of pre-made classes for that. So you have the pool and you can like you can create it to, to create an object pool. The way that it works is that you just implement this and it knows when to create or not to create another object. Um, and, and there is like a lot of stuff for so for example another thing that 
um, you usually want to avoid this uh, allocation. And whenever you, for example, cycle a normal list, you create an iterator. And that's to ensure that obviously like you, if you if you cycle it twice, you just don't don't touch each other. Um, obviously, that does not work in game programming. So there is like there are a lot of um, they basically recreate a lot of data structures which are um, optimized for this kind of thing. So for example, array instead of using um, the normal lists will give you an iterator and will reuse the same iterator every single time. So without any allocation. But obviously that are... means you cannot access it from two different places at the same time. Yeah, so I, I would say that most of the time, unless like I'm talking about small scale games, you're good with one thread. Mm. As in all the games that I made, I made it like single threaded and usually you have like plenty of space with these kind of simple games. Living the JavaScript life. <laughs> yes, it's, it's simple like, um, it's lovely because you don't have to think, oh, is this going to be accessed somewhere else and modified? It's just mm -hmm. going to be in order. So in a way, it's simplifying. Um, and there are like a lot of uh, useful data structures. So for example, you have an int array or an int int map, which would be like an, a map where the keys are int, so you avoid boxing and unboxing. And like, yeah, there, there is a lot of useful um, stuff. Is, the, the a, is that a sparse array in Android? I think, if I recall. Um, I don't know if the int yeah. map is like a sparse array. Uh, there is like every single class actually. There is a lot of explanation on how they work. So I remember that long map. I think, yeah, long map is another one. But yeah, basically, they. I think that they are similar in in idea. I'm not sure if it's like a sparse array. I am checking. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a fancy nice. array map thing. Yeah, and on, you have all, the, all, all, all sorts of like data classes or data holders. Uh, but yeah, and like this one is, is a simple game. I try to not to get to, um, to a lot of like tools. Uh, but there are like libgdx, for example, has several libraries that you can use to do um, entity component system, which is kind of like a design approach to how to make games. Uh, and you can think of it as like, it's a way to avoid basically polymorphism in, in Java in our case, so it can be on the classes. So the idea is that um, imagine that you have um, different components of your game. So it can be like a tree, your character, uh, it can be the background, the background that is showing. All of those have things in common. So, for example, all of those need to be rendered on the screen. Uh, a tree has a position, while the background does not have. The player has a position and also responds to input and so on and so forth. Um, and you could try to basically structure that with class inheritance. So you have like something that just is shown on the screen and then you extend it to make the background that is just shown on the screen and so on and so forth. But when you need to combine a lot of uh, different behaviors, it can become very difficult because you might have um, things that you wish to be like horizontally assigned to like different features, I don't know, uh, having sounds. So now the, 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 the background screen maybe has sounds, but uh, the player has sounds. Uh, so how do you solve that? And, Entity component system, in short, kind of like sorts that uh, that issue. So you, it gives you a structured approach to that issue, without going too too deep into how. Um, and they tend to be also very performant um, because the like the way that they can be implemented is through an array. And when you have an array, you have basically like very fast access to that memory because they are like just next to each other in memory. Uh, but we won't worry too much about that. So going basically to how this this thing work. Uh, yes, we were we were saying yeah that the snake does does something and this something is a lot of stuff. How do I explain it to you, Seb? 
teach me how to explain it to you. Uh, I am not ChatGPT. Oh no! <laughs> oh crap! Uh, you might have gotten a bit too used to talking with AIs. <laughs> yeah, isn't this code with GPT? Am I in the wrong place? Yeah, sorry, um, sorry. Yeah, this this does stuff basically just add, add stuff for like this is an array. So basically, it's just an over it's it's an over complicated array of stuff. So you have like an array of position. So every single position is like every single square of the snake, right? Mm -hmm. So this will grow over time as the snake gets yeah, longer. Exactly. And then you have an array of images, which is just like the representation on the screen of the of that position. The white dot, basically. So you could yeah. well, theoretically right for for every bit of the body of the snake, you could have a different image. Yes, you could. Mm. You could. Like a I zebra think. snake. Yeah. So for example, to do that, um, let's do a zebra where... snake. Why I have I'm a, like a visionary, Sebastian. This is what this is what you don't okay. get. Zebra I'm a snake. So we want the first image to be like one color and then you alternate. So this is the place where we add like to a single component to the body. Uh, we could say like whenever like the length is even, you do mm -hmm. one color. When the length is odd, you do another one. Yep. Oh. So then positions, size. Um, I don't know why I put the if there. By the way, it's Java. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you if you're yeah. familiar with Java. It's complicated to write. I have not written a semicolon in a long time. Oh man. Yes. Yes. And between Kotlin and TypeScript, um, safe to say there's no semicolon in my life. <laughs> Let's see, like a coral snake. Wouldn't black on black being hard to see? Well, but it's not black on black. Oh, it's gray, right? Ooh, Ooh fanciness is giving me. I yeah, I'm I having a stroke, but okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's. I think yeah, we need also, an Italian. Can you, can you do Italian flag? Italian the... flag? Italian flag? <laughs> Okay. So yeah. Can you do? Uh, can you do the um, epileptic uh, sensitive people uh, disclaimer at the beginning? <laughs> because that thing gave me a lot of so weird. weird so thing. yes, let's do. Um, so basically, here we would say something like oops, out. Yeah. So. Basically, it's fits bad. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Hey, don't don't spoil interviews for people. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. 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 This uh, incredible, accurate way of evaluating people's skills. Yes. Make them Let's do see. things that uh, others have already done. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that Sebastiano just mentioned, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da, but can you use the a pizza? pizza or the, <laughs> can oh, you use the, the pinched hands emoji for the images? Can the, you can you pull emojis in this thing instead of images? Like no. Drawings? Come on, give me a joke. I, I, I am not able to, but if you render me like, oh yeah, give me a second, I know how to do it. You see, you see. Imagine. Uh, we, um, we don't see anything. We just see. We I know because I'm doing. I'm just generating it in mid journey live. <laughs> <laughs> so you are we need to, to talk AI. about your mid journey addiction. <laughs> okay, so the, eventually we're going to have an intervention. But uh, just to, to do a shameless plug. This mid-journey thing is actually getting very useful for us because we are launching in the next few days a new Android app. Spoiler, with Daniele and a few other friends, Aurelio. And it's going to be available on the Play Store. And it's going to be 
uh, AI generated wallpapers. So this is this is this is, this is happening. This is happening. It's everything, everything. It's very exciting, and everything to justify uh, a premium account for Daniele on my journey. <laughs> So, so same the same thing. I needed just an excuse to get a chat GPT premium uh, and access to ABI. So um, it's it's yes. happening. It's happening. So just just be patient. Um, so it's not and, and, an emoji, but I have an image. Uh, I will show you as soon as I manage to open it. Hey. <laughs> so we have this. <laughs> It's it's a bit, it's a bit creepy, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's very I mean, photorealistic. You ask for uh, for for something you know, if I want. For a pinched pinched hands. Okay, so yeah, the the yeah. And now you can see now live that this this bit here will will have a, a small one pixel on the left. And then okay, can, yeah, and then the the big image here. Ah, because it's, it's generate. This is the packed version. Yeah, exactly. While this one is the original one. It took me some uh, time to realize that there are six fingers on that hand. Wow! There was something uncanny. There was something uncanny. Yeah, it's one more so finger. They, <laughs> yeah, they, they. I mean, the more the merrier. But uh, <laughs> is it actually still having? Uh, and issues with uh, with hands. Apparently, it's worse with bo bo bows. I showed you the bows experiment. Wait, what? I don't want to know. Bows. Do I want to know? What do you mean bows? <laughs> it's just funny, like bow, uh, bow and arrow. Oh, ah, bow, archers, archers! Oh, I fuck. thought for a second yes. you were doing some very NSFW stuff. No. no, 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 no. Yeah, but I remember, I remember the bow and arrow. I we were we were yep. discussing. Can you like uh, create a like a uh, Dungeons and Dragon kind of character, like you know, like a archer, a warrior, why, whatever, something, something. And the arrows were like all over the yeah, place. Yeah, the, the, the arrows flip, are fantastic. Flip. You know, it just. It just doesn't get it. it. There were there was no one that was legit, you know, with a with a bow and arrow. Everything was messed up. So, so the yeah. answer was yes, unless it's a an archer, in which case no. Yeah, yeah. it really struggles with with archers. As an example, you you can see that like there is no no one of those which is actually using the arm. like everything just goes. Yeah, and this one I think was a crossbow, not even a bow. I was trying to make it make a crossbow, which is yeah, this one will. It didn't. It's it like didn't. It, you know the, the the guitarist with the double neck guitar is the same thing. It's just double bow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that, I I get I I wonder if Mark Ellison has a double guitar, like one of those double guitars. Anyway, so, so how do you pull... I did here, I set the scale, so I scaled down the image because I, obviously like this one was uh, designed to go in like on an image it, like, it's like one by one and now we're using like uh, 1024 by 1024. So I'm scaling okay. down the image inside so it fits in. So it's, it... gonna, it's, it's gonna be a tiny, tiny end with six fingers. Oh. Actually, I cannot see it. Oh, yes, yes. Um, let's do without the scale so you'll see what happens first. Don't forget to show us the window. Because we cannot see it. Yeah, and also it's, it's still, yeah, it's still uh, multicolor, so you don't see it. Like you see the color because you're setting the color, but that's yeah. about it. Why is the hand not there? Because I forgot one thing, which is if you go on the snake. Ah. Yeah, yeah. You might want to pass the right one, otherwise. Ah, uh, because he was looking up on the atlas, the white pixel instead of the actual. Yeah, hand. I did not change the code. Oh, hey. Look at that. Beautiful. Ooh, Ooh, oh, he's Italian also hands. Like a... <laughs> <laughs> this is also applying. Uh, okay, now I see. 
<laughs> it's horrifying. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's very uncanny. Oh wow! I, I would probably go with the pizza instead of the end. The, the end was a was a bad bad choice. Yes, yes, yes. Was it uh, though? Was it? I mean, if you want to give me the creeps, yes, thank you for the nightmares. Um, but okay, so basically, you you can do whatever, whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, and like you can, you don't even need to use images and stuff. So if you look inside image and look at the draw method, there is this parameter here, which is called an, a, a batch. So a batch is a way to pass multiple draw commands to the GPU in, in short, because you don't want to uh, to call the GPU and make do one draw command flash to the screen and do another draw command because it's very slow. Yeah. So what, what the batch does is you you just pass it a lot of commands and you say okay now send them all to the GPU. Boom and it does yeah. the thing. Is, but is it drawing like a, like a path, Sebastiano? Is like a, a vector? Thing, no, like, it's not like a render. Based. It's, uh, it's no, but based. it is just like the, the 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 path drawing that we did with Mark. You know, that was just uh, go from here to there, draw a line. Is it doing I that kind of stuff? I think it's just a set of draw commands or or even just saying this image goes at these coordinates. Yeah, what, what you will do is like the batch has a way to draw. Um, yeah, no, let's let's go to the batch classes. So, so when you go to the batch class, you can draw a texture. So the batch is okay. able to draw. When you do this, actually, it's, it's not drawing immediately. It's recording the draw command. Uh, and there are a lot of them. So like, you can see that there is a, a million of them, which are also with a lot of things. Yeah. And then you have like simpler ones where you, you just want to draw on an X, X and Y, for example. OK. Yeah, because usually you don't want to specify all this stuff. Uh, but I personally don't like you can use it if you want, but you're not necessary. Like you don't need to use it unless you need to do something where you need to uh, do something different from I don't know, drawing an image, for example. Or if you if you prefer not to use like you don't need to use the the whole scene uh, system. So you could just write your own framework if you want. Can you draw? stuff by hand instead of using images so if you want to draw like a line or you want to do like asteroid uh, yes um is it called shape drawer asteroids wow jesus you unlocked a memory that i said <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> yeah i don't remember the name but yeah basically there is um there is one thing which takes uh, as an input a white pixel mm -hmm. and the idea is that it gives you commands to to do that and as much of libgdx is like a third party library because it's like the the cool thing of libgdx is not really just the uh the engine but the fact like there are many libraries and you can reuse them and they're they're usually more like updated more often than the whole engine because it takes less effort to update a library i think it's called shape drawer let me check yeah it's shape drawer is this thing here so this one is similar to what you you were asking. So what you have is mm -hmm. you see those those lines instead yeah, of yeah, having yeah. to draw. Yeah. yeah. So what you do is you create the, the drawer and then you can I don't know for example draw the line. Yeah. Yeah. This is looks this looks legit. This is yeah. something that I would expect like the the Android path. Uh, yeah. This is this this is something. It's that not vectorial. Can... Just to be clear. So this one is yeah, just. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but it's so, it's a uh, logo logo like enough to yeah. to be able to. So if you you said you pass it the white pixel, right? Yeah, but you can because pass it anything, that, and it will draw whatever. Precisely, but the ah. idea is that the white pixel is useful. It's kind of like imagine not the paint. Uh, what's called in Android the, the stroke? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the stroke but say that you're passing. It's like um, a brush. Mm -hmm. Got it. And the white pixel is useful because then you can easily set the color since it's white. So uh, when you set the color, I think it uses uh, add. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, anyway. And the idea is when when you have white and you set the color, it gets exactly that color. I have a unrelated but 
not 100% random question about libgdx, which is, mm -hmm. is there a particle system? Uh, there are actually. Um, if I manage to get the right window, hey, I think it's over here somewhere. Oh, wait, there you go. So there are physics which are using mm -hmm. box2d. So it's basically a JNI to box2d. Mm -hmm. uh, which is C++, right? I think it's C, but I have oh, no okay. idea. It's native anyway. That's the... Yeah, so you have, for example, this one, It'll which is to the particle editor. Got it. Uh, and basically, then you, you load those into the into into your libgdx app. I have mm. the particle section in the in the previous gems. We used it for sort of like blob somewhere. So if I look for mm -mm -mm. particle effect, yeah, you can see it where it is. Yeah, basically, particle effect is part of GDX. You can mm -hmm. see that the, yeah, I don't know if you can see the record, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, And you load basically this PFX file, which is the sort of like the animation of the particle with all the mm -hmm. information. And you give it the, like, where to find the images. And it's going to load basically the particle effect. Got it. I I think there are also 3D particle effect systems, but I am not super familiar with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's flame. Yeah, this one here. Wow. Fancy. Yeah, there is um and, and the like it's it's making a library is easy because it, it's just a jar. Uh here this one is another very useful tool. This is basically to produce a bitmap font. So oh, you it. get a TTF, you, you set the size and it gives you the the whole like the whole file that you could see here. Um, do not I have fonts here? Um, in the other. Uh, you closed it. Oh, did I? Oops. Yeah, you said that uh, this window. My bad. That's all right. There you go. Oh, yeah, you have it. This this is the original one. Mm -hmm. Then you have this file and this file that got generated by that tool there. The mapping and the PNG basically. Yeah, there is also I think one extension for true type, free type. So this one is a way that you can basically generate a bitmap font on the fly in short. Oh, wow. uh, okay. But it doesn't work super well as far as, then, as I remember on web, so I tend to just like, I use one yeah, font. Fair enough. So, like, hmm. Hmm. You I was can thinking see the font. If you were creating a game where you have like interacting with ChatGPT to talk to, to like NPCs and have the bot respond then you would have to use something like this or no, you can still use the bitmap fonts, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you preset the font, right? You, you decide yeah. how your UI is going to look and then you're just going to set that. Right. And actually. Sebastiano, why do you give him ideas? Because I know he's going to do it. <laughs> yeah. No. So for example, this one is a library by one of the community members. And this is actually like the animated text and all this stuff is, is all supported by uh, formatting tags on the text. Oh, nice. Yeah. You just need yeah. to plug in chat GPT. So you yeah, can do, fun. you can do uh, Japanese style uh, text adventures and have all the weird text styles and stuff. I mean, I think in any kind of game where you have like a text box, sort of, you would want to have the the, the text kind of roll. Mm. It looks nice. Mm. It's, yeah. Yeah, Mark Mark is, is asking something very important. Can you blink? <laughs> can you, I mean, can I you, guess can you blink so. It? We could check. Can blink. you blink it? 
it can blink in different colors. So here it says it can blink. I think it means that it can blink in, like you can do blink by putting like transparent and then any color. Yes, the answer is yes, like, it can. Yes. It, it is can, then it approved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now the, the, the tool is certified. Mark Mark Ellison certified. There is also like a cool library, I don't remember the name, which is uh like for visual effects. Oh <laughs> Geo see this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I mean technically you can also do 3D, it's just that I'm I'm bad at it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So you... and so ju just to give a, to to have an idea. So now you are familiar with the library and uh, and I get mm -hmm. it. But let's say that um, how long did it take to build the snake? Just to have a rest, a rough. So for me, it was like three hours spent in different days, okay. more or less. But that's because uh, you, already that knew, easy... you already knew. You already knew libgdx. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But that's the. That's what I'm what I'm thinking, right? So you, you get familiar with the library, you build a few of these tiny things, maybe not in three hours, maybe over a week or a weekend, and then you start thinking about okay, this is this is doable. I can do a gems, a gem, mm -hmm. and I can I can I can build something decent in one week. Or I have one week, I have this kind of knowledge, I have to reduce the scope of the game because I won't yeah. make it. So this is the the interesting part as well. You know, that what can I build in one week? With and Android, they, I, I do that, right? With yeah. Android, we, we do that. I, I know that I can build it in uh, one afternoon and it, w it won't have tests. <laughs> I mean, I think a good so, way of starting uh, is you, you want to, to build as little as possible. You might want to like start by copying a game. So I don't know, copy Tetris, you cannot publish it, so just copy it for your own purpose. Uh, <laughs> no, Tetris, Tetris like, is like a minefield of, of issues if you want to, to publish it. Um, is mean, that because Nintendo has the copyright on something on that? I don't know who has the copyright, but like... Sounds Tetris, like Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> They are gonna send you ninjas, so that's uh, it's like they 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 are not gonna send you SWAT. They are gonna send you ninja, just as uh, to send a message, right? They're gonna find the the season disease on the on the door affixed with a shuriken. <laughs> with a... <laughs> uh, nice. That's actually <laughs> that's like, uh, who they they knocked. Check the door. <laughs> you open the door. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> oh, nice. It would be like a good afternoon. Or a terrible mm. one. Well, yeah. I mean, that def that's definitely a desist. <laughs> like a season desist right away. Yeah, I think in general, like you, you want to keep the game as small as possible to learn and as simple as possible. So, for example, Snake was a very simple... I think Snake is a, it's an easy one to start with. Because you have like some weird stuff, like what do you do when you hit uh, the the border? But it's not like oh, some some other things are moving. So you have, for example, only one moving object, and the rest is kind of like just staying in the same place. You don't have the camera that has to follow, uh, and you can also expand on it. So for example, you like what happens if snake instead instead of being in a box, is in a world, and so you want the camera to follow the snake being always at the center, and just um, seeing the world all around you could do that right yeah but mm -hmm. as you as you said that the, at the beginning i couldn't be bothered about borders but that would be like you know something that you can build right you know, yeah. let's add some some bit more complexity uh, now you have another way of dying so yeah, what, exactly. what you're saying is you want to graduate from the 3210 snake to the 3310 snake that had the borders <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it also it also gives you like a lot of appreciation on like if you consider it took like three hours even so um, I work with the J with sort of a, the, the JVM every every single day and I did play a bit uh, with, with the GDX it took three hours 
and I have like a whole development system. I have like IntelliJ, and you have to think that like Snake was made on like to run on a Nokia with with the tools that they have. So I can imagine that the complexity was uh, like um, on paper. <laughs> they built it on paper. I mean, um, we sent a man on the moon, so we. They, I'm pretty sure that Nokia could could have managed. Um, yeah. Sebastian. Yes. Do you have any final question? Uh, who won the giveaway? <laughs> who won the giveaway? Let's run the giveaway. One, Woo! two, three. Give Pick away. a winner. Yay! Congrats, Mark. Yay. Yay! Congratulations to Mark Ellison. He is also one of our hugest, hugest supporters. <laughs> and so Mark. thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark, for making this uh, this show happen. And uh, thank yeah, you, Tudor, that... as well. Thank you, Tudor, as well. And uh, the, the basically, Mark is paying for the shipping fee for the giveaway that he has won. I mean, that's full circle. <laughs> with, the, with his support, he's basically paying for the shipping of the, 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 uh, the giveaway. So that's that's brilliant. Um, support the troll. <laughs> yes, yes. Troll. Um, so, Daniele, this actually uh, opened a bit my mind about this stuff because I'm very... Sebastian knows I'm very afraid of everything that is any like graphic related. And he's dead. Or no. a font. <laughs> so everything is, uh, I get very, it's very scary for me uh, because I never, I never done this, but this Let's feels kind of approachable, approachable, you know, because you also say that the community is huge. There is a lot of documentation. So and let's look at the scale really in the sense like that game, that whole game is 300 lines. So this is the wow. diff of the and game it's logic, Java. okay? <laughs> it's Java. And it's Java, it's so Java. in code it would be way less. Cool. And like there is like, there is also rhythm in the, in the diff, so you, it's less than 300 <laughs> lines, you know? <laughs> and there's the Gradle files and then... Yeah, the... there is a bunch yeah, of stuff. The Gradle uh, file. That you, you probably Money. don't count as, as logic. And there is also like me using that gear in a, in a game, which is probably like, I'm the only person that does that. But yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's amazing. Like, why would you not, like, it's like if you were not to use dagger or dependency injection uh, system and Android, at some point you're going to go mad. So why not using it? No, no, no. And it also Rather supports you... GWT. Does it? Ah, yeah, of course. Okay, it's right. Google. Google stuff. Yeah, I mean they, they actually have the um, um, what's called the you know the, you know the you need the JWT version of the library and they do mm -hmm. have that for yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, that probably yeah, means that there's just... still some parts of Google web stuff that runs on GWT, probably. G Gmail. G I doubt I mean, it. Sure. I doubt it. I uh, think that they're we just... all know keeping it but it might be like some secondary page somewhere that nobody has bothered looking in the past 15 years <laughs> so, and and daniel is profiting from it so i'm yeah. i'm 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 fine i'm, fine I'm with okay with that. that i'm i'm super okay with that as long as daniel is happy playing and building <laughs> games I don't yes care. yes that's that's the most important thing so, but I, I just from a non-technical part, I just I'm just curious because I never asked about on on Telegram about uh, the the gem the gem situation. But how how does it work? I mean, do you oh yeah do you schedule? Do they schedule them? They schedule that. So, for example, this is the last one that we we did. Uh, so the gem usually has a as a starting date. You cannot see on this one, but if we look at like gems upcoming it's so this is for example call. look at the jumps which are organized this is on each. giving me waterfall nightmares is this a gantt chart <laughs> no this is just a calendar every single one of them is a jump god damn yeah and so usually the in libgdx the community um like the, the usual people that do it there is an amazing 
uh, YouTube uh, trailer for your gem that you should just watch for the for the pleasure of the of the trailer. And yeah, the, the way it works is like you usually have an initial time, which is where you start suggesting a theme for the gem. Gems usually have like a theme after which the game has to, to be made. So for example, in this one was wedding. Uh, which is, it, it's okay, a way also a, to, a thing. Okay. yeah, it's not like very strict. You don't have to be uh, super into the wedding theme. In our case, for example, it was just like the aesthetic theme around the game. Um, yeah, here you go. You can see like there is suggestions for which one of the team is going to be. Then we vote on the team and then eventually there is a jump starting. It doesn't get more community driven than this. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, but also other gems do something similar. So, um, what was the horror? And then, I mean, do, do, is it is it like a context? Do you win something? There is a leaderboard. So or is it on, just like I want to be part of this and you I win to, knowledge. I want to have fun. You no, so, that's for sure. Yeah, there, there is one, one saying that is like you win the game that you make in the sense. Uh, the reward of the gem is the forcing you of finishing the project in, in a similar, mm -hmm. but there are also like, there are not LGDX, LGDX is mostly community, but there are like gems that are sponsored, gem, gems that are like prizes and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, you, you basically can see the submissions there. Like if you, uh, this one was an amazing game uh, and like, you can see people commenting and interacting. This is the cool part of the gem. Like, you know, uh, after after you made the game, after the gem, you go and play the various games of the people if you want, and, and you say, hey, that's a nice game. I like that and that and so on and so forth. Um, so this one, with this one, for example, is um, how about self place pixel? <laughs> it's basically a drawing game where you are competing against an AI to draw the same the same thing. Ah, the rest of the owl, Sebastian. Yeah, I mean, so, I'm going to yeah, start with the... You can see the... here, it's drawing, and you, you need to, to draw the same image. The first one is simple. So the thing on the left is AI-driven. It's, like it's, just, it's just like the computer doing it. Yes. And then it okay. gets harder. <laughs> that was actually cool. You know, but this is a I, And look at the bastard. Ah. Uh, no. It's yeah, also this sabotaging is you. This thing, like. This is. It's just hate inducing. And so, so good. <laughs> yeah, it's. I don't know if you hear the sound also like the, no. the game design. But yeah, can you but, uh, we, can you also sabotage his image? Yes, you can. <laughs> Suck on <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. You can change the reference if you want. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's that's uh, now I you made it slightly that's easier. Edge case. That's an edge yeah. case. And um, Okay, yeah, so on the on the topic of jam, I, I was just checking out the GMTK game jam rules for mm -hmm. this year. Uh, for those who don't follow it, uh, the uh, Game Makers Toolkit is a really nice uh, YouTube channel, and they also do a yearly game jam. And in the in the rules this year, they've added a provision for please don't use AI generated content or code, which mm -hmm. is I I guess is gonna make a big difference for jams because then you don't need to you know. Uh, I mean, so for example, in in FGDX, there is no such a strict rule. I, I do know about that. Uh, let's, oops, I was trying to bring the, the tab so people can see it. There you go. Um, I think that, like, I'm not super happy about the, the, the AI, gener AI generated, but I really appreciated how uh, the organizers, for example, uh, listened to people because the, the initial rule was only not generated assets, but yes, generated code. But then they're like, yeah. so I think it's fair in the well, sense. I, you know, I will, I will probably pick the, the opposite, right? <laughs> I will let the, the AI generate the assets because I I can't draw, but I yeah. I mean, I can see both points. 
in the sense, uh, there are also a lot of artists that usually don't find developers and would like to participate. So, you know, it's it's also, um, since, since it's a contentious topic, I can see why uh, they decided not to allow that because, you know, you, and, you know, as, as long as you don't allow both code and assets, so no, neither of them can actually uh, use them, I think it's fair. Yeah. And it's it's a bit difficult, like I can I can see some kind of games being made by um, by AI. It's very difficult to um, to do stuff like if you want a lot of control, I find it very difficult to actually generate mm. the images that you need for um, and not like I usually um, do the jam with uh, with Sandra, the the woman I was yeah. uh, mentioned. And she's an amazing uh, artist. Yeah, yeah. But so I know. I remember from from what you what you showed us. But you know, I I wouldn't know. By like, the way, I have the, the results of uh, the pizza slice. Jesus, I, the the last one is a oh. bit creepy. Yeah, the I mean, first one. Intense. The first one is the best one. Yeah. The first one. The first one is super cute. It's a sweet summer child. It doesn't know it's gonna be eaten in a second. <laughs> yeah, it looks yeah, like a timeline. So this one is when you are like still in school and you don't know what's up with work. This is like, hey, yeah, I got out of the university. Yes, I'm gonna get a job. This is like four years later. You're like, I am so tired of this, and this is like, I want to get retired, please. <laughs> yes, that's a, uh, it's a bit uncanny. But the first one is cute. Indeed. Yeah. So there is a there is a long way to go for designers and artists as for coders. I mean, I think in general it will be, um, and at least for me the jam is more like having fun with some friends at this point, and it helps. With, uh, yeah. Like if I make the game and I like if I code every like it's useful. I think GPT can be useful, for example, for people learning. Uh, I saw a lot of people that are using, I think, the AI from Discord to to get started with game programming. Because maybe you don't have, you don't have anyone that like helps you like getting started, and it is like kind of like a body that helps, and that's pretty cool. Um, I I wouldn't see myself doing like the coding with the AI, but I think it would be nice to have like problem solved by it. So like, hey, how do I do that? If you don't know, how well, to maybe do it? like you you could still use it to ask like, what is that? What does it do? But maybe not to generate the actual code and copy paste it. Yeah, exactly. I think that would be fair. Yeah, I mean, it's like if you ask someone else. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay, well, we're out of time, uh, but we have a snake. Uh, is there a place that people can get like a play with snake? Did you publish it anywhere uh, apart uh, from I the... I did not publish it, but I can share the, the project. Yes, thank you. And you can hope that the project runs. I mean, it did uh, for you. Know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, it works so on my sure. machine. <laughs> uh, the CI is not happy, I see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have an CI, but this is the, the part of me being in, you know, like, why do you have an CI on a, on a demo project? On, on uh, a three uh, hours project, why do you have a CI? I understand perfectly well why you do have a CI on a three hours project. Well, but <laughs> <laughs> let's, say, let's say that the configuration of the CI is going to take longer to build the game. Probably. Yeah, in my case, I, it's just because the the starter project that I have. Ah, uh, you have a template. Yeah, I have the template, which is the one that I shared, plus that, that, so this one, which has all the stuff that I need here. And this is useful because in the jumps, uh, you know, you're going to publish the game. Yeah. So this one does everything for you. Right. So it pushes yeah. it like to each or something. Or... Yeah, if you look at the drums, cool. it's gonna, yeah, so for example, oops, those are, yeah, here, the actions. So here you can see all the, oops, this one did not, um, you can see all the releases. Mm -hmm. And there are three pages of releases during like one week jam. If I had to do 
every single release by hand, that would be a lot way more time. Got it. Yeah, yeah that, that makes uh, a lot that's of sense. Con con continuous delivery, so that's you need something that automates this. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah. thank you. Daniele. Thank you Grazie. for having me. Grazie Daniele, grazie. Prego, prego. Uh, And grazie. you organize a project for your drums. <laughs> Fair enough. Hashtag it, project. It helps management. a lot. It helps a lot with like managing time. Um, Fair enough. Well, we hope to see the progress in your next jam uh, coming through the Telegram channel as usual. Uh, It's for folks... be one month. Ah, for folks that are not on the Uh, Telegram channel, then uh, I think Ivan has the link handy, probably knowing yep, him. Yep. Uh, it's yeah, going to yeah, be on yeah. the chat really in a cool. second. And you can also find Boom. it if you're looking at this on YouTube. I mean, it's fairly easy, but if you are looking for it on the YouTube, it's also going to be in the description. Probably if we remember putting it there. Uh, <laughs> there's always a big We have templates. Templates, have templates, automation. Because, yeah, <laughs> also all the age and drinking, you know, that stuff doesn't, doesn't match. Uh, okay, so for those that are on the Discord, see you on the uh, after show in a second. For everyone else, thank you very much. We will see you next week with <laughs> my favorite topic with? recently. <laughs> Text. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Text again? Yes. Really? I mean, because I have it... good news. There's a there's been a lot of improvements in performance in text. Uh in I think specifically oh. in Compose, but it might be on Android in general. I, I don't remember. But that's what we're gonna find out next week. So So I wonder how many people left are in the Compose team in the text area that we didn't have I as guests. Might be missing I can think of two but there's probably some more okay wow but so uh, how many would be the... available to come on a stream maybe one <laughs> fair enough i mean it's it's 50 of the available yeah but one, then i can so, start right? from the beginning of the line right oh that, like yeah. round robin kind of shit okay yes. <laughs> I, I, i see <laughs> fair enough so thank you again thank you for the support uh check oh, hey, out Zach. our mesh so <laughs> I mean, it's just, uh, we summoned, basically, we summoned him. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, check our coffee page for the Bruschetta tier if you want to join the after uh, chat, uh, after live uh, video call. And uh, thank you for the support. Mark, I guess I already have your address. Because, <laughs> so, no, don't sweat it. I'm going to just send you the, the, the starter pack. And, uh, Daniele, thank you. Thank If you, you want for having me. Stickers, just give me an address. <laughs> Sebastiano. Okay. Have a great one. Bye. Thank you. Bye.